Yang Maha Mulia, Maulana Pudukar Seri Begawan Sultan, reciting morning verses from the Quran. Around the catafalque were grouped His Majesty, Her Majesty Pudukar Seri Begindar Raja Istri Pengiran Anak Saleha, Her Royal Highness Pengiran Istri Hajah Mariam, Duli Yang Teramat Mulia Pudukar Seri Pengiran Perdana Wazir Sahibul Himah Wal Wakal, Pengiran Muda Muhammad Bolkiah, the Foreign Affairs Minister, Duli Yang Teramat Mulia Pudukar Seri Pengiran Bendahara Seri Maharaja Permai Suara, Pengiran Muda Haji Sufri Bolkiah, Duli Yang Teramat Mulia Pudukar Seri Pengiran Digadung, Sahibul Mal Pengiran Muda Jeffrey Bolkiah, the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, Camp Deputy Finance Minister, their wives and other members of the royal household. This morning, Istana Nurul Iman opened its gates for the people to pay their last respects. They came from all corners of the country, from all walks of life, from all races and creeds, young and old, to say their last farewell to the nation's most beloved elder figure. Some filed silently past the coffin, others stopped to pray, each in their own way conveying the national loss. By late morning, the first of the foreign leaders began arriving to convey their sadness at the passing of one of the region's elder statesmen. Singapore sent its president, Mr. Wee Kim Wee, and the acting trade and industry minister, Brigadier General Lee Sian Lo. The Malaysian state of Johor sent its acting sultan, Duliang Mahamulia Tengku Ibrahim Ismail, reflecting the close relationship between its and Brunei Darussalam's royal family. Sarawak was represented by its chief minister, Datuk Patinggi Haji Abdul Taib Mahmud. Malaysia's Prime Minister, Datuk Sri Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, arrived in the afternoon to pay his last respects. <laughs> Indonesia's Armed Forces Chief, General Datuk Paduka Sri Bani Murdani, flew in from Jakarta. The Sultan of Pahang, a long and close personal friend of Brunei Darussalam's royal family, Duliang Mahamulia, Sultan Haji Ahmad Shah Al Musta'in Bila, was also there along with his wife and daughter. Ke bawah Duliang Mahamulia, Maulana Paduka Sri Begawan Sultan's body left Istana Nurul Iman on its last journey on the shoulders of two of his sons and other male members of the royal family. The 
The coffin was placed aboard a hand-drawn carriage preceded by 12 outriders and regalia bearers drawn from armed forces and police personnel. Behind them were a further 17 armed forces and police personnel bearing Kabawah Duliang Mahamulia, Maulana Paduka Sri Bugan Sultan's medals and decorations. The funeral route was lined by school children who turned out in their thousands despite the downpour. His Majesty and other members of the royal family, as well as the foreign dignitaries, followed the cottage on foot for the one and a half mile journey to the royal mausoleum. Dan inilah dia kenaikan khas yang membawa jenazah almarhum ke bawah Juli Bang yang dikasih. At the mausoleum, three of His Majesty's brothers helped carry their father's body to its final resting place. Inside the royal mausoleum, His Majesty joined his brothers in lifting their father's body from the coffin and placing it in the grave. Jenazah almarhum dismadikan berdekatan dengan makam ke bawah Duli yang maha mulia pada Kesri September 1979 Ketua Negara Asing Pada 13 September ke bawah dunia maha mulia Maulana Then the state kazi yang dimuliakan Pintuan Imam Datuk Paduka Sri Setia Haji Hamid bin Bakal Led the gathering in the funeral rites Beginning with the bertahlil prayer Gathered around the country's mourning royal family and dignitaries were the Sultan of Pahang, Singapore's president and the other foreign royalty and government representatives. After the Tahlil prayer, the state mufti, Yang Dimuliakan Bin Datu Sri Maharaja Datuk Sri Utama Haji Ismail, conducted a second funeral rite, the Talqin ceremony. At the end of the 90-minute mausoleum service, his Majesty led the sprinkling of water from silver urns onto the grave of Kabawah Duliang Mahamulia, Maulana Paduka Sri Bugan Sultan. The former ruler was interred next to his wife. And now, His Majesty and other members of the royal family go into private grief, with post-funeral prayers to be held nightly during the 40-day mourning period. Entertainment has been suspended for 14 days. An era had passed with the internment of Kabawa Duli Yamahamulia, Maulana Paduka Suri Begawan Sultan, General Sir Muda Umar Ali Saifuddin, Sa'dul Khairiwaddin. 
It was an era that had witnessed the coming of age for a nation and its people, a movement begun by the Kabawah Dulia Mahamulia, Malana Pudukesuri Begawan Sultan, that he saw to its fulfillment. May 31st, 1951, the dawn of a new era. Amid ancient ceremony and ritual, Sultan Omar Ali Saifuddin Sa'dul Hairi Waddin is crowned the 28th ruler of his line. He was declared Sultan the previous June on the death of his brother Sultan Ahmad Tajuddin. Born on September 23, 1914, Sultan Omar Ali Saifuddin Sa'dul Hairi Waddin received his early education from tutors before attending the Kuala Kangsar Malay College in what was then Malaya from 1932 to 1936. On his return, he joined government service as a cadet and served first for a year with the forestry department before being transferred to the magistrate's office where he studied civil and criminal law. At the same time, he was also deepening his knowledge of the Islamic religion under a number of well-known theologians. Sultan Omar Ali Saifuddin Sa'dul Hairi Waddin married Pangiran Anak Damit on the 6th of September 1941. She would later be known as the Paduka Suri Sri Begawan. Their eldest child, Brunei Darussalam's present ruler, was born on the 15th of July 1946. They had nine other children, three more boys and six girls, before the Suri Sri Begawan passed away on September 13th, 1979. From the start of his reign, Sultan Omar Ali Saifuddin Sa'dul Hairi Waddin took the initiative to give his country its first constitution, visiting Britain for talks in 1952 and again in 1957. Two years later, in September 1959, following his third visit to Britain, Brunei got its first written constitution, under which it would become self-governing. <laughs> adalah satu langkah yang besar dalam kemajuan perlembagaan negeri ini menuju ke arah kerajaan sendiri yang penuh dan merdeka On the 4th of October 1967 Sultan Omar Ali Saifuddin Sa'dul Hairi Waddin abdicated the throne in favor of his eldest son the present ruler his Majesty Paduka Sri Baginda Sultan Hassan al Bolkiah Muiza Din Waddaula. The preceding 17 years had seen tireless efforts by His Royal Highness on behalf of his country and people, efforts that would enshrine him as the architect of modern Brunei. These same efforts led to the midnight birth of Brunei Darussalam on the 1st of January 1984, when in the capital that had been named after him, he led the nation in the call. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar <laughs> <laughs> 